nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 68 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. So in our previous two videos, number 66, we went and did an overview of how method missing uh, should work and with some examples. And then in our previous video, we went and wrote some baseline specs to protect the default implementation of method missing to make sure that we don't um, inadvertently break it or if we do that we are alerted by the presence of failing tests. So now we're going to start taking a look at actually implementing one of these methods and I'm going to move all three of these into in progress because we'll we'll wind up tackling this as we we go through our first example of a um, of a method that we want to capture here. So um, we'll work through it. We'll get it working and ugly. Um, at that point, RuboCop will probably shoot our dog, but we'll refactor after we get it working as needed. So we'll start there. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and we're going to create a folder in our specs. called convenience methods and we will create our first spec file here. I'll pause and do that. So I've got this file. I'm just going to kind of similar to how I had it in the the issue will kind of make those look like um, role DNN would be role and with any set of digits there. Um, etc. So that's kind of how we'll we'll structure the names of these specs. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go in, get our basic structure here, and I think pretty much all these are going to have a similar situation with um, with the uh, subject magic. Etc. So that's going to be the setup for all of these. I'll go and pause and create our describe methods here. All right, so I've got my describe here. I've got my it methods. And you note here that I, I'm only really testing three things so that it calls nerd dice, roll dice with the correct arguments, that it defines the method after it is called and that it handles subsequent calls without calling method missing. And the reason why we're able to do this is because we've put in place a thorough and robust set of specs for nerd dice, roll dice. So as long as we are asserting and um, checking that the nerd dice, roll dice method is called correctly, then we don't need to rewrite and rerun all of our nerd dice roll dice specs because we know that those work and um, we, we just need to make sure that it delegates properly. So um, that's kind of the, the scope of what we're testing here is making sure that it calls the right method with the right arguments and keywords, that it defines the method after it's called, and that it handles subsequent calls without calling method missing. So I'll um, pause and uh, write the first draft of these specs and we'll see how things are going. All right, so I've got some at least first pass at some of these methods. We'll take a look at them in a little bit more detail. So the first thing is that we want to uh, make sure that nerd dice receives rolled dice with the correct arguments and calls the original when we um, do magic dot roll d20 with our method options. I added in a second it statement here to make sure that it works with no keywords. So this is our use case here. Um, so it will receive roll dice with just the number of dice and call the original. So we've got that. And then um, this will test that it defines the method after it's called. So we um, do magic.roll d100. And then we expect the public methods of that object to now include 
roll d100. And then our last one here is to um, make sure it handles subsequent calls without calling method, method missing. So we will expect our object to receive method missing once uh, with our, uh, our args there. And then I'm calling it uh, with the method options, without the method options, and with the method options again. And it should only receive uh, method missing one time and after which the, um, the method will be defined on the, on the object there. So let's see what we've got here. So, so we've got our four failures. at them received method missing with unexpected arguments so there is one bug in our spec here so that is actually what we should get there so I, I wrote that spec wrong let me fix that um, so that the after we do this it should fail saying that it um, expects it to receive it once and instead received it three times. So all right. So let's rerun that. I'm just gonna isolate to So now, so I think we need to explicitly include the double splat when we um, redo, when we override method missing. That is not a problem now. Um, oh, it actually might be, let's see here, line 33. Yeah, so it's the second time when it's, uh, when it's doing that, it's, um, it's failing there. So it means that it, it received it once with the, the arguments that we had. So we will now see if we can go in and implement this so that the specs pass. So we'll run to our convenience methods module here. And we'll make sure that we've got our correct set of arguments here. All right, so we've got our arguments and now we need to make sure that we are calling super here so what I'm gonna do is create a private method So we'll have a private method here called match pattern and delegate with the same set of args. And we'll have a case statement in here.
least get the basic version of this. So that should at least get us back to see if we have any syntax errors or anything. I'm going to run the whole suite. Should have still the four failures. No oh, failure outside of the examples. Oh. That's my case statement. So I think this is largely a function of that we we need at least one when statement. So let's go and get our regular expression for what we want to match here. So I'm going to go to Rubular. If you we've I think touched on Rubular before in previous examples, but whenever. I'm dealing with regular expressions and building them. Uh, Rubular is an indispensable tool for uh, for doing this sort of thing. So I will um, throw our stuff into here and make sure that we've got a few examples and um, that it's working. So pause. All right, so let me go through this regular expression. So the backslash A is beginning of the string of the method name. We're expecting the uh, it to start with roll and then um, the the actual character D and then one or more digits and then we should see the end of the string which is what the back backslash lowercase Z is so we can try this out roll D 10 works roll D thousand works roll D 8 roll D 9 D 2 roll D doesn't match Roll D3 with anything at the end of it doesn't match this particular use case, which is I'm fine with. And then we will now try to add this to our gets us to a different set of failures. Still have error outside of examples. Else without rescue is useless. So unexpected backslash I think is causing the other issue. So we'll try, yeah, yep, I did not put this in regular expression notation. So let's try it again. We're back to failures, which is good. And we've only got the four, so that means that we are still delegating to method missing properly, which is what we want. All right, so let's see if we can get these items defined here. So let's start here. We will, instead of just returning true, we will write define dn roll dnn and with all of our method names So now we 
should be able to use the define method on this. So what we need to do now is parse the number of sides out of the, um, the method name string. So we will create yet another private method We might wind up refining this later, but for right now we just need the number of digits that occur after the uh, the letter D there. So we will do that. So let's go back to Rubular and the portion of the string that we're matching right now is just the D and then we want one or more digits. So um, D20 will work, 13 D20 will work and it will still match everything after the D, so that is giving us what we want. So we'll do that. I'll write it, pause and write it. All right, so we've got our method here that should get call it get sides method name and in our case we are going to do nerd dice roll dice sides keyword arguments. And that should be it. So let's see if this progresses our items here. Still failing on all of them. Still have undefined methods. So let's check and see. So we're defining this, get sides. We are defining that method. We're only doing it once, so let's make sure that we that. All right, so let's see if that fixes anything. Still four failures. Let's take undefined method. Okay. It's not getting to the point where it's defining the method. Let's put in some puts statements here and see if we're reaching any of this. So we'll I'll pause and add those in. So we've just right now doing a put statement saying where we are and see if that gives us any more information. So let's take a look at this. So it looks like match pattern and delegate is not getting to where we need it to go. We'll take a look at that method in closer detail and we'll um, make sure that we ex inspect the arguments and everything. All right, so let's debug this a little bit. Pattern does not match. 
roll. Ah, that's because my spec is wrong. So you've got to use your own item correctly here, buddy. Let's see if that fixes anything. Oh, we're down to one failure. Excellent. All right, handles subsequent calls without calling method missing. Received it with unexpected arguments. Well, let's take a look at that last failure. I'm just going to see what happens. reverse the order here. Handle subsequent calls. Received two times, so we must not be defining the method properly, even though it's coming back Let's run into the console and see if we can figure this out. So we've got that's a dice set. And foreground color got delegated, which is what we want. Public methods includes roll d12. Dice 2. So we didn't add any options that gave us what we want there. This appears to be working the way we want it to. Try this. So it 
it's only going through the first time there, which is what we want. Let's see if it's just a, it could be a, it's receiving it once. Maybe it's just the, the way that this to receive item is behaving. I'm going to comment this out a couple times and see if so that that worked when that happened. Now Add it back in the second one only, and it's still saying it's receiving it two times, which is not what I would expect. And we'll isolate on line 30. missing exists. Maybe I've got the that is interesting. expectation in here. All right. Ah, so it is not yet defined here. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I need to call. That is weird because it's working. I'm going to comment this out. Maybe it's the R spec that is. Yeah. It is that um, that to receive issue there. Let me try and see if dot and call original. Solves this. Oh, it looks like it does. All right. So that was what I needed to do in order to make that work. So get out the extra expectations. We'll put this back where it belongs. Re rerun it. Get rid of our puts statements. when 
then all right. rerun this whole class that is working. Rerun the whole suite that is working. Look at our code coverage. 100% and let's see if Rubocop is going to shoot our dog. All right, let me go through these. So one of the things that we're being dinged on is um, define respond to missing if I'm using method missing. So we'll probably make that a subsequent item in an episode. And we've got some items unused, unused arguments. We are getting into trouble for having our snake case, lack of snake case there. Okay, so we'll see how many of these we can autocorrect. Still passing. Well, let's see what we're down to in terms of our offenses. So use snake case for method names. So let's exit out of some of these. Change that to roll DNN. Down to four offenses. Same issue in our spec here. So we'll close that file. And we'll just do a good old that file is not yet tracked, so. are still passing. Rubicop is down to three offenses now. So one of these is related to the subject. So let's see if I can just get away with changing subject to let here because it's not truly the subject. Down to 
two, and then our spec should end with nerd dice convenient methods. So maybe I can just add here what I did in some of these other ones. So we're down to the one item there. Let me see if I can move back that, rename that convenient method now. Specifically, that this one still exists and is packing, passing. Ooh. I have made a mistake here. Oh. There we go. Okay. So the one remaining item is that we need to define respond to missing and I think so I think we're just going to go for it. So let's go back to our normal convenience methods spec. We will add a new it statement. or two, so we'll do a positive and a negative. So here's our kind of basic it statements. We'll do these. So here are the basic items here. I anticipate that they will, one will pass, one will fail, which is what I want here. So now we need to and I'm also going to uh, oh, I've got this backwards. Always make sure your your it statements match your logic. And for each of these now, I'm also going to make sure that the specific pattern is matched here. Make this D6. So now go into our convenience methods item here. And we'll override respond to missing. With the same method signatures, we'll pull up. So we've got here respond to missing. So the symbol include all will be the the pattern here. And we're going to also create a constant. So when we're looking at these specific match pattern and delegate items, we're looking at a very specific uh, pattern here, but we don't want to call this method because it will actually go and try to define the method 
in respond to missing, which is not what we want. We want something that has zero side effects and just returns true or false. So we're going to create for now, and we'll wind up adding to it as we add different use cases, a constant here So right now, because we've only got the one item, um, the overall regular expression just has that, but we'll wind up adding to this so that we know the overall pattern um, and all of the different um, options that we've got there. And then in our method here, we want to do so we've got uh, whether it's matching the overall regular expression or um, super. So we will go back and try rerunning our whole suite. We are back to passing. Let's take a look at our code coverage. We're at 100%. Oh, now Rubocop is angry at us. They're both autocorrectable. So, yeah, we're just calling freeze on it. So, Rubocop is happy. Our spec is happy. I think we can commit. Write our message. All right, so we've got our commit message. I did add one item to the, the backlog. So all four of these are gonna be knocked out when we complete this. So we'll save this and sign it. Do a git status. All right, we're clean. Push to the remote. While we're waiting for the GitHub actions to complete Move these to done. If the the benchmark suite fails for some reason on the GitHub action, I'm just gonna see if rerunning it solves the problem. So we'll let that finish. It completed. So this is a big uh, chunk of work. We'll uh, probably knock out more of these more quickly on subsequent episodes, but this kind of lays the groundwork for um, getting the rest of these done. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.